Making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? So, good evening, Profit Traders. How are we doing tonight on this uh, last day of March, March 31, 2015? Welcome to April Fool's Day tomorrow. Uh, for anyone that's new here, I want to say welcome to the Hit and Run Candlesticks member eLearning. And for uh, all the folks that are here all the time, I appreciate it. I truly do. Thanks for all your input. Uh, another day, another dollar today. I hope that's what it was. I hope everybody made a buck. I always, always hope somebody makes a dollar. Uh, today might have been a good day to perhaps take some profits on some longs, uh, maybe close some longs out, add a short here and there, uh, consider an inverse ETF maybe. Uh, I think tonight, you know, we'll look at a couple of shorts, I think is what we'll look at, and um, just kind of run down and, and uh, uh take a look at some of the market uh, a bit I I've been sitting here I actually had um, I, I actually had this on um, whole where it just it automatically goes through what it was it called your slideshow uh, I had this on slideshow and uh, just watching some of these charts here and I, you know what, let me I'm gonna put it back on slideshow just see if it'll Okay, so I've got uh, uh, some ETFs up here, and uh, you can see it changing. And I've sat here and I've drawn trend lines um, on it. And I also I drew the trend lines on it, and I came back and I just put the 50-day simple moving average up here to kind of give the charts oh what I call depth, something a little more three-dimensional than just just one view and I, I've been sitting here for a good hour uh, already tonight just going through different charts and looking at them and and uh, I you know I put these trend lines on there like this and then I added that 50 in there uh, and I and then I sat and I watched through them again and uh, I've actually watched them several times and uh, I'm seeing a theme here that that I'm not liking too much. Uh, the theme is that the majority, there's 14 stocks here we're looking at total, um, and and th there's a there's a, a large number of them I should say that have broke down through the 50-day moving average and are trending down, or they're showing candlestick signals of at least testing uh, the 50, and you can see a couple of them here. This. I, I mean, I think this here just just screams of testing the 50. XLK is broke down, and you know it's it. A lot of them are hanging on to the edge right now, is what it kind of looks like. Um, the Primo Bull could probably make an argument of, hey, we're right on support. Yeah, baby, let's go. Well, we need to see that buy signal. The Primo Bear could probably make an argument with the majority of these and say. Hey, we're already losing ground here. Uh, the bull, the bear, just might be winning, and we don't know it. Uh, that, that's what the primo bear might say. And you know, I I I think when it's all said and done, it's it, it's probably up to each individual based on your trading uh, techniques and what you're looking for. But uh, I I can I can I can say that I don't. I, I see it's like this XRT it's gonna change or like XLY it certainly looks like a test of the 50 area and again many of them have already broke through we've already run through these uh, let's see one and a half maybe two times already so I'm gonna stop that that slideshow it's kind of a neat little tool there I find it useful sometimes and it's it just it's just this kind of theme I'm seeing um, the the cues that were not up there uh, I don't
don't think yeah they weren't up there you can see they're they're starting to break down and I mentioned this earlier today that that we can have all the groovy and cool indicators we want uh, and and uh, we can draw all the fancy lines and and we can come to some conclusions uh, but there's some things that just have never changed they they are it, it, it's engraved in concrete it is it is what it is and it will not change I don't think ever since the beginning of the stock market and that is a simple theory of higher highs and higher lows and uh, a lot has to do with your your um, um, what was the word I want um, uh, trading timeline um, you you're, 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 you're your personal trading and how it how it matches up with the market so for instance you know if you're a long-term trader you can look at this you look you can look at this chart and say we don't have a worry in the world this is normal and I would tend to agree with that right now I would tend to agree with that but on the other hand if you're a short-term swing trader I think we've got a couple of issues here and I just happen to stop at the queues we can just about stop at any chart or any ETF you want uh, but uh, just happen to stop here at the queues but that short-term swing trader we've got to be we've got to pay a lot of attention to what's going on uh, right now time horizon is what I was looking for early, a minute ago uh, the time horizon for the market or uh, for the chart you're looking at has to match your trading time horizon that's very important um, I've run into folks that uh, are very short-term swing traders and um, you know they look at charts like uh, the weekly chart and they say well it's still in an uptrend and my friend your time horizon and your trading horizon are not matched up you've got to match those two up uh, so I, I, I think that's really important so you know it doesn't matter what we say tonight doesn't matter what we talk about if it doesn't fit your time horizon it's not going to work for you um, and I, I think it's important for you to step back and just just uh, just kind of follow that so let's go back to something that's just been since the beginning of of time and uh, you know that's higher highs and higher lows um, we've got a high we've got a lower high we have a lower high here it just continuing to work itself down let's take a look at that spy that's what we look at all day just about you can see there we have a high a lower high and a lower high notice we have a low and a lower low that you know I some a lot of times in trading I say that 2 plus 2 does not equal 4 in the stock market it really doesn't but there are some things that you just can't fight you just cannot fight them this is one of them when you see when you see a series or even the beginning of lower lows and higher lows that is looking to something a bit bearish just the opposite opposite for bullish you're looking for higher highs and higher lows and that will give you that bullish trend now don't get me wrong here there are very few bearish trends that last more than just a day or two that you cannot find some excellent bullish charts there's always great relief rallies so you know don't you know don't don't worry I know some people don't short I know some people that don't trade ET inverse ETFs they only want to trade long I know very few people who want to trade just the opposite in fact I was talking to an individual here actually a month or so ago and it was uh, kind of funny and they're primo I mean they are like super short 
and world's kind of coming to an end a friend of mine and uh, so I I had him on the uh, screen here and we were uh, sitting here one night PMing and and looking at the chart and they were telling me oh yeah go short go short go short but yet on the other hand over the past year and a half they really haven't made any money and I said well you go take a look at this chart on the bigger picture uh, here let's put this to a weekly there's that weekly chart um, and and they're like you know they're a serious shorter not not a short-term swing trade shorter and I said well how's that been working out for you um, you know at, at the very most you may have gotten some good solid the market is turning over type short just a couple of times over the last couple of years this might be one right here um, I think right in here and right in here might have been pretty good not that they moved all the way to the 50 it just they were pretty healthy to the downside so you know it it's it, it, it that goes to you've got to just keep it you, you've got to put the time horizon to the market to your trading and 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 go with that all right so I, I look at these charts and I'm I'm thinking this is not this 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 there comes there needs to be a a change here um, and we you know we're constantly looking at longs and we're constantly looking for those long trades and we're gonna consider we're, we're gonna continue to do that but I do think we are um, we need to really consider some of those uh, shorts and uh, you know Pam uh, just posted up there uh, we are stock pickers and that's exactly right uh, you've got to be very particular how you pick your trades make sure they're working be a little more diligent don't be just you know don't be so oh buy the dip here we go and you know all is good I, I would be a little more diligent uh, with those stops um, I, I know a lot of people that don't use stops and there are times that it gets you in trouble uh, in in a bull market, the trouble might not be um, the 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 trouble might not be horrible, but in a market that's starting to roll over, that trouble could could double and triple before you know it. So, um, I, I say I'd be a little diligent on that. See, John is asking. Uh, should not the market have a good pullback once in a while to rest? Absolutely, John. Absolutely. So, John, John, what John is saying is, shouldn't the market pull back? And I, I absolutely agree, because that's how more money comes in. That's how smart money comes in, and uh, that's what drives us higher. So, I agree. The thing of it is, is we get to a, a breaking point, and then we have to be careful because a little bit of a rest or a little bit of a pullback starts turning into something a little rougher I'm not saying that's what the markets about to do all I'm just all I'm saying here is we really need to watch this because we're at a bit of a a, a tipping point and we, we really have to be careful uh, with that and and here's one reason why John is we we are human beings and sometimes it's very very hard for us to turn on a dime generally we are not uh, speedboats generally we are cruisers and it takes a little while to turn what we're thinking um, we can see it in the chart we yeah Ed point out we don't like Ed's pointing out we don't like change so I mean let's face it let's look at let's look, how can you argue how can you argue with this I mean wow this market since what let's call it 2012 here holy mackerel how can you argue with that easy I'm a bull I don't want to change I like what it's doing I like looking for my J hooks I like looking for my rounded bottom breakouts. I like looking for bullish 
uh, candlestick patterns that have follow through. I like that. I'm comfortable with that. So we we get out there and we get used to this and it's sometimes it's hard for us to turn that ship around. Um, like I said, we're not speedboats as much as we we think we are. Uh, we really are not uh, uh, speedboats. It's hard for us to turn uh, fast. So I, I'm just trying to throw a little caution out there. Uh, let's let's come over here. Well, you know what? I'm going to go back to that. Keep the chart clean tonight as much as we can. One of my favorite short patterns, and I, I apologize. I'm going to have to put a throat lozenger in my mouth, so if you if you hear it, I do apologize, but it beats coughing. Okay, so <clears throat> there, there are all kinds of ways to short a chart. And I am not bashful, and I have no problem admitting I like being long. I'm a long trader. Doesn't mean I don't short. Doesn't mean I can't short. It just means I like looking for long trades. That's my forte. I like it. But there are times when we have to look for shorts. My favorite short is simply something that someone created several years ago called a blue ice failure. And it's all you're doing is you're using the 50 day moving average, which happens to be blue, as kind of a dividing line. That's all it is. Oh, and by the way, uh, for those that don't know, Dave Elliott, uh, First Wave, if you knew him, um, TC2000, or I think some Think or Swim, um, uh, he's the one who came up with this, uh, certainly coined it, and as far as I know, um, in, in my trading time, uh, he's the only person I've ever learned it from. And it works out pretty good. So you're just taking the 50-day moving average, and it's your, it's your guiding light. Anything above it, think of it as bullish. Anything below it, think of it as bearish. So when you add a few other things in there, when you add a few other things in there, like candle patterns, um, the fact of lower highs, the things like that, when you add that type of stuff in there, then what happens is you come up with a good, pretty good game plan of continued selling and follow through. So I'm looking at the SPY here and that's what I see is a blue ice failure. Um, I also see a, a, uh, a bearish H pattern. This would be the H pattern right there. H pattern. Um, kind of a funny thing. Uh, over, over my years of trading and trying to educate um, you know, we come up with all these patterns. I certainly didn't come up with this. Uh, I didn't come up with it at, at all, uh, but I certainly do use it. And uh, uh, I certainly didn't come up with a, uh, we'll call it a rounded bottom. I certainly didn't come up with that, but I certainly did use it. And as I, as I share this with people, things like this, or the H pattern, or the J hook, things like that, I always... Um, not maybe not always, but every now and there's there's somebody who says, "How in the world do you get a rounded bottom out of that?" Or, "How in the world do you get an H out of this?" I mean, you've got some candles down, you've got a rally up, you've got a sharp pullback. How do you get an H out of it? Well, you kind of have to you you have to color in a few things. You really do. Um, you know, if you see a a rounded bottom. Uh, candlestick wise uh, or or chart wise you know you may see a uh, uh, a down day up day down day down day up day up day down day I mean it may be all over the place and you just try to connect those lower dots the best you can without touching them that's the key don't touch them if you try to to um, if you try to go through here and touch that one well, I kind of drew this one uh, to look this way, but uh, you know, if you kind of touched them, you could probably see the rounded bottom. But the reality is, it's very hard to connect the the lows or the closes uh, or the opens or the highs to get a rounded bottom. 
just like it's very hard to connect the actual candlesticks and get an H pattern here. So you really have to draw around what it's doing here. So um, anyway, uh, that that's just a little bit about drawing these patterns and the H pattern, the rounded bottom, things like that. So when I see this, I see that. I see that uh, H pattern. And all an H pattern is, is just an upside down J hook. A J hook is bullish. It's a continuation pattern. All an H pattern is, is simply a continuation pattern. But it's the bearish side of the continuation pattern. Um, and what it's doing is it's it's suggesting lower highs and lower lows. Uh, you you could come in here and draw it as well. I mean, there's is 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 that not an H right there? Not pretty, but it is an H. And what it is, it's a it's a high that makes a low, that makes a lower high, that comes down and makes a lower low. The H is when it finally breaks below, is what it is. Uh, that's that's where the H pattern comes in. So do we have a real H pattern right here? No, we don't. Do we? But when you connect or when you add a candlestick signal, a bearish candlestick signal, at a known support area, whether it is a a hard support support line or whether it's a major moving average that gives you the 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 um, credibility that gives you the probability that that um, it, it's going to follow through with what we see a low a lower low and a lower low until that changes and the only way for that to change is to stop and make a higher high for instance right now for this to stop and make a higher high to be bullish what would it have to do it would have to be above that high right there this is simple old-fashioned just plain chart reading right here this has got nothing to do with candlesticks this could be bar charts this is this is the you know two weeks after the market opened I maybe whatever it took or take or took at the time maybe to create some sort of a uh, a low a lower high and a lower low that's that's the pattern and it's been there since day one nothing has changed so what I'm trying to say here is don't fight this this is not something to be uh, uh, fought with um, over the last couple of days and, and some time ago I talked something about tricking the market and I don't think you can trick the market the best you can do is work with the market and we come up with all these tricky little ways to do it but there are times when we need to sit back and take a good really good look at what's going on and it, and when I look at this I see two lower lows I'm sorry two lower highs two lower lows and well actually three lower highs excuse me one well two start one two there we go two lower highs and now we're headed down where we could make that lower low if we make that lower low then we're really setting this up for some sort of a failure to the downside um, so I'm, I'm not trying to scare anybody at all because I, for the most part I am still a bit bullish uh, I think we have a little ways to go and if you saw all these charts that I flipped through the majority of them are still have the ability to use a trend line here for support and bounce the the key we're so close right now so I'm gonna call this key this is gonna be a key area and uh, just FYI a horizontal line is always always stronger 
than a diagonal line. So this is going to be the real key right there, right here. But we are so close, I think we should consider that we're going to see a double bottom or something awfully close to it. Now I'm about to get bullish. See that double bottom or something awfully close to it, and then we could swing up. But we have to take this high out right here. This, that's, that's important. We have to take this high out. Otherwise, we start getting into that, well, down we go, and then we get in a little trouble here. So what I'm trying to do is turn that, is, is just make everybody aware of the big ship that's out there, and we just might have to be like a speedboat. And uh, John up there, thank you for your comment, John. You know, when John sh wrote, uh, Rick, should not the market have a good pullback once in a while to rest? I agree. But, um, you know, don't, what I wouldn't do is, is, is get out there with the, with the idea, well, it's pulling back just to rest. It's pulling back just to rest, to rest, to rest, to rest. Of course, there's a couple little rallies in there. To rest, to rest, to rest. In the meantime, you've been fighting this all the way down. Now, finally, I do that too long, too far, I think. And then what happens is you fight, 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 always going long. Finally, you throw in the towel. And now you're going to get short because it took you this much time to turn that big ship around. Now what happens is we get a bounce. And guess what? We just might see a rally. And now you're still fighting that downtrend, not ready to turn. So all I'm trying to do here is help the turn if we need it. That's all. Okay, let's go look at a couple of charts. Um, no, John, I want to say thank you for your comments. Uh, I, I truly appreciate it. Um, uh, absolutely, I appreciate your comment. Kind of, it, It's very nice, and it's easy for me to talk when somebody um, somebody shares. Okay, uh, today I went short some, some, some of this chart right here. Some of this chart. <laughs> I, sorry about that. I went short this because it's doing just what I like to see. Uh, one, we have a rounded top right in here. Now, over the past course of the past couple of weeks, I've kind of mentioned the market. We need to watch this market. It's starting to form this rounded top, just like this is. Now, we've got a nice little spike here on high volume. I saw GD today post, it's, and I think he posted something after I had mentioned this, and he posted a chart on this chart, and I think he made a comment. It's always nice to have a uh, high volume at the top. I could not agree more. Uh, that is a very good thing. So when I spotted this today, uh, I, I saw this. I immediately, first thing I saw was the H pattern there. And then, you know, you can't help not to see the little little spike up here. So I'm thinking, I wanted, I want to short this. So that's exactly what I did. Now we'll see how it works out. Uh, but this is a very typical short pattern right here that I would I would uh, take and we'll, we'll just see how that works um, here's another one and I'm gonna have to tell a little story about this one I have to tell on myself a little bit it kinda makes me mad but I'm gonna tell on myself and everybody that was in the room already knows it uh, I explained this trade uh, completely the other day this was on our members list as a short still as a short well I shorted it I did great I did my job. I did what I was supposed to do. Then the doggone thing got a little bullish right here. And then it got bullish the next day. And then it got bullish the next day. Well, I kept it. I kept my short. Because it hasn't, it didn't do anything to to break my short. Now, wh what I'm trying to point out here is th this is what I would call chasing in my book. I chase this. Rather than sticking with my guns, on my first choice, which I still could be wrong. I decided to chase it. And what I did was I came up here and I turned the trade. I closed out the short, took my loss, two point some odd percent, and I bought it long. 
I'll be doggone today. Look at that. I, I, if I would have stayed with my short, today I would have added to it. I know that for a fact. I know me. And I would have added to that short right there. But instead, here I am sitting with a long. So tomorrow, what I'm going to have to do is, if this continues to move down, I'm going to have to go back to my old plan. Because what is it doing? It, it, it's, it's making a blue ice failure. And I'm, you know, I'm kind of telling on myself, sort of as a lesson to myself. And, and that lesson is, the chart pattern is doing exactly what I thought it was going to do. But because I let a little bit of a little move here kind of change my attitude about it, and when you can see here, it never took out those highs. Cardinal sin here, uh, big time sin. Should not have done that. So, uh, and, and and if you look, you can you can see that H pattern starting to starting to brew there a little bit. Uh, so anyway, I just want to point out here's a chart that was on the short list a few days ago, uh, was shorted, switched to a long, and now I'm going to have to close it out again for another loss. If if we go short, I'm going to see what it does tomorrow. But uh, uh, I will be short this right away again. Now, the nice thing about it is when I look for my shorts up here, um, when I lose my shorts and I come up here and look for them, there's kind of a rule that I have. And this, this goes with that whole 50-day simple moving average. Um, and that is that the market likes because people force okay the market likes because people force the market doesn't do anything by itself the market is just a blah boring nothing without people so people is what does it but people like simple things we really do we like the 50-day moving average because you can't go anywhere on the market and not hear something about it. You can't look on the internet and not hear something about it. I mean, it's got to be one of the most most famous moving averages there are. So let's use it to our advantage. Hence, the blue ice failure. The 200-day simple moving average. Probably one of the other most recognized moving averages there are. I mean, again, you talk to some seasoned traders and they all say things like, well, all the big boys use the 50 and the 200. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Um, I don't know for sure. But, you know, based on what I've seen, I'm going to have to agree with that because they act as magnets. So we start getting that blue eyes failure. Where's the next logical place for it to come to? Now, I know there's all sorts of things in the middle that could stop it. There are all sorts of things. Um, but I tend to look for what the possible move might be. And I want to see a possible move that we can make some money at. So when you'll notice, when I look for shorts up here, I'm looking for a move that I can get around 10% to the 200. That's just a little little tidbit piece of information right there. If this was a trade to the 200 of only 3%, I would not be interested in it. I'm not going to I'm not going to buy and sell a chart for 3%. Just a personal thing. So, I want there to be at least that possibility. Um, and let's go look at the weekly chart and I want to draw a line right here. That's pretty close. There we go. <clears throat> look how Look how the weekly, if we move this in, uh, into a weekly chart, you can see the 200-day simple moving average is just nip and tuck of the 50-day simple, or the 50-day simple is just nip and tuck of the 200. I don't think they're exact. I, one, I think if you use like the 40, I think that's the perfect or, I don't know, something like I'd have to look it up to be exact. But there's a, there is a mathematical equation that gets you even closer. But I think if we just use the simple 50, that everybody and their brother uses and we use the 200 simple which again 
everybody and their brother uses. And by the way, wouldn't that be just a nice little pullback, a little correction? Pretty healthy on a weekly chart, pretty normal. I'll take that move from here to here. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out, uh, looking at that chart right there. Same with that CELG. CELG, I'm looking for that, you know, somewhere in that 10% mark. And you can see I'm right at right at 10% there. So um, I think that's a pretty fair uh, <clears throat> a uh, uh, fair profit possibility and then and then realize that um, nothing says the 200 uh, has to stop it uh, at all so the, a little bit about shorting uh, there uh, I just felt we needed to talk about it uh, something I want to do is if you're familiar with the rounded bottom breakout that that you know for those that that have that that look for those charts and one of the best ways you can look for them is literally look for them. Um, you know, we can have all the scans we want, but it just drives you in, a, in an area that's close. Uh, so let's just look for some. And, I, you know, I've got a list already started. But um, uh, PCT, PTCT has that possible... Uh, short look to it here and you can see how it's all rolled over now we've got this double top failure here we have a low high failed high low failed high moving down um, like this low high low you know we're constantly drawing uh, charts that look like this this is the failed version of this this is the short that red was a short version um, Another uh, chart that I kind of like here um, is FEYE. I pointed that out earlier uh, today, not earlier, late today, uh, but it was uh, late this afternoon today. Um, and you, you can see how we've rallied up and we failed the T-line, and which the T-line, uh, you know, we can talk about it, but that's not important here. The important thing is we've made a low, a failed high, and now we're coming back down. That's what we're looking at. Uh, we look at a trend line here, and look, it man, we just grab some of these candles. We're right there at that 200-day simple moving average. We can put a horizontal line in there. Here, let's just do that. Let's drop that horizontal line in there. That's pretty good support right there. That might be a short uh, down into this area, and there's another 10% right there. Keep in mind, when you're looking at this short, you're always going to see relief rallies. You, you will. You will see little relief rallies. They may be just like this, or in my case, in my sob story, they might be like this right here. Just little relief rallies. That's all they are. Until they do what? Until they prove they're turning around. What, and you know, I say this all the time. All the time I say this. What does a chart have to do to make a change. There's only two bottoms that can be formed. I'm just going to show one of them right here. And that is we have a rally. Okay, good. Yay. Let's pull back. All right. Let's get short. Now let's rally. Darn that short. But you know what? It's got to clear that high. Otherwise, we're just chasing a lot of noise. That's all we're doing. That's why it and now I'm going to switch to a long setup here. That's why it is it is so profitable to trade charts that break out like this, and then when they pull back, I'm going to make this all green. When they pull back, you look for that buying because they've done what it takes to make the bottom right there. Low, high, back, find some bulls break out and close over this high that's why that pattern works so good and here I just totally blew it with that should have stuck it out oh well I'm 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 scolding myself here as as an educational uh, matter for myself so I hope no one minds okay so let's look at a few others uh, wait a minute here jump jump jumped ahead um, you know, 
I, I see charts like this and and here's where you want to you know make sure at, actually that didn't look like it was going to be a 10 percent but there's a 15 percenter right there and this chart is still heading down with with all the little relief rallies look you know it just has not made those um, it, it just not hasn't made that bottom yet to swing higher so you you want to and you know we talk about staying with the trend stay with that trend as long as it's in the trend just like this stay in that trend as long as it's in the trend as long as it continues to make higher lows and higher highs as long as it continues to make lower highs and lower lows <laughs> Dave <laughs> no I'm picking on me <laughs> Uh, Staples here. Staples is a uh, look, looks like a, a shortable trade right here, and um, really easy. Just just draw a line in there. There you go. Anything below that line is short, unless it gets unless it gets out of hand way down here. Then what happens is you get that, and you know what? I probably way too much down there. Then you're probably going to get some sort of relief rally right in here but if it does not make a bottom it's gonna to continue to roll down that's what it's gonna do so uh, uh, Mac man look at look at this Mac here here let's look at let's look at that that volume spike here let's let's take a look at this let's run that up there's a volume spike up here there's another one let's let's run that there's the one there's the one we one or two we want I guess it's I guess it's that candle right there is what it is man that's that's at the top and now look at this thing starting to roll down um please don't be bashful uh, post some stocks out if you guys have some you want to look at long or short doesn't matter um, we'll take a look at them I I hope my message tonight was just and, and you know I, I think Ed said it very good up there. We don't like change. We really, really don't. And I want to go back to this chart real quick. Heck, I wouldn't want to change that either. How bullish can we be? I Man, I don't want to change. But we might have to bend just a little bit. We just might have to bend. Okay, so uh, MK, long. Ross, one second, please. <clears throat> you're long this. You know, um, if you're long and if your time horizon is correct, you know, if your if your time horizon matches, you know, I'm I can I could see that I could. I think you might take a little bit of a a a, a little bit of a a knee crack in here and there. But if your time horizon doesn't match, you might be in a little trouble. I mean, I look at this and I see, I see this, and and you know, MK, I I don't have the foggiest clue where you bought it or anything. Okay, I don't know if you're short term or long term. I'm a short term swing trader. Uh, we'll call, we'll say ten days for one number. Eight days, seven days, seven's closer. So I look at this and I see this candle right here when you see a candle that is strong like this and and uh, uh, during the day here we talked a little bit about uh, uh, we talked a little bit about um, uh, sorry I lost my my train of thought here um, good grief I'll have to come back to that anyway when you see a big candle like this and oh votes we were talking about votes there we go I'm back at it um, think of each candle as a vote and also I can't get my head around 1 million shares traded heck that's that's a big number I don't have the patience to count a million so I, I can't even get my head around it so what I do is I consider each and every candle 100 I can do that. 
There's only 100 traders involved with this trade in my mind. You can put as many zeros behind this as you want. Nothing changes. Nothing at all. So if you think of this as a vote, how many people do you think voted here? I'm going to say 100. And there might be 101 in there somewhere. That is one perfect uh, uh, dark cloud cover here. That thing opened up and closed down without a mistake. That thing, it just spoke volumes right here big vote how many how many votes were on this candle right here I don't think there was a hundred nope 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 when you look at the size and the and the dynamics of that candle that candle doesn't come close now I see there you said that uh, and thank you very much for posting by the way um, you bought it earlier today, short-term trader. You um, bought it earlier today. Uh, by the way, if you bought it earlier today, I get that, but I would have also closed it out today because it did not do at all what you wanted it to do. Uh, so let, let's go back to this here. We have these votes. Look at there. There's no votes right there. I'm going to change my pen real quick. There we go. How about that candle? look at that candle there now since we're looking at two candles let's go ahead and look at that candle let's think about the votes here the dynamics of what's happening do we have that dynamic here Nah, I don't think so I just don't think so um, how do or how are bottoms formed they are formed like this not like this bottoms are not formed like this I'm going to be a little tough on this because I'm being tough on myself. All right. Bottoms are not formed like that. Bottoms are formed like this. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about that. There is no questions about it. V bottoms, at some point, they always do this. Always. Granted, it may be way up here. I'll give it that. I have seen that. But it will do this. So the safe trade, I think, would have been not so much to jump back in real quick here and sorry I don't mean to be picking on you okay I really don't uh, I just I appreciate you you uh, getting out there and I hope you take it all in good stride um, so the the thing to have done was maybe wait for the pullback wait for confirmation over the uh, 20 day simple moving average uh, here's something I want to point out uh, when you look at uh, raw stores look at this thing we know what it can do we know it's a dynamic dynamic stock I mean excellent I, I can't man I couldn't badmouth this stock at all this is a great company I absolutely wonderful so we know what it can do which means what does that translate into it translates into we don't have to be in such a doggone hurry that's what that translates into if if we've got a hundred dollar stock here this is easily a hundred and twenty five dollar stock easily maybe not today maybe not today and maybe after some sort of correction but trying to catch a couple of percent for a twenty five dollar move I think I would be patient and let this let this carry on a little stronger. Prove to me it can do something. Proof to me, by the way. Let's put a line up here. Uh, I keep my eye keeps looking at this high right here. I want to. I want to. Uh, oh man, yeah, right on, right there. <laughs> That's it. I wouldn't touch this stock down here, not with a ten foot pole. Over this area, yes, and then I wouldn't care about this candle. If it can get back over this area there, that would give me the the proof, or at least the not not the proof. I guess that's a little absolute, but that would me give me the confidence that this stock is able to take this candle on. And also note that that with this candle here, more than likely you're going to see a lower low tomorrow. Um, I would put my money on that. 
what I couldn't tell you is where it's going to go to or where it's going to close. We can come close, but I don't think it's as sure bet as you're going to see a lower low. Now, that thing starts to turn around when it breaks out over that, that's where you want to be long. And I want to say thank you for that. And I thank you for letting me go on about this. This was a good chart to do that with. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, oh, let's see. Uh, John, let's see. Spy, I see that it generally spent more time above the 50. Does that reinforce the short argument? Love the vote theme. Um, no, you, you know, um, you know, John, no. Uh, I, let, let's see, does that reinforce, reinforce the short argument? No, in fact, it probably reinforces the bullish argument. Man, I'm probably messing you up, aren't I? Um, look at that bullish move. Uh, I I personally am not going to be bearish, like ugly bearish in the market, unless the SPY gets below, uh, we'll, we'll just call it 200 for round numbers. Uh, so below this area right here. Uh, that's where I'll get, I'll get, okay, we have a problem here, folks. Uh, otherwise, it's just minor correction time. But from from a short from a a a short-term swing traders perspective, that's a nightmare. Th this is a nightmare from here to here for a short-term bullish swing trader. That is an absolute nightmare. But the overall market is not broken unless we get below this area here. Uh, now we get below here. Woo. <laughs> Yikes! Then we then we might get broken. I I hope that <coughs> excuse me. I hope that helped your your question there. And let's see. Hello, Charles. How are you? Uh, core C O O R. Uh, nice bullish chart there. Looks pretty darn good. Nice little flag. Uh, certainly been traveling up. Um, you know, under the current, uh, under the current, current, um, attitude of the market, I would be a bit cautious only because it, it sort of looks like the bulls bears are smacking it down a little bit. And, uh, uh, you know, a nice little move right back to the 50 would not be horrible. Uh, not at all, but it could cause you a bit of grief. So the thing I would do is is look for some confirmation. And this is the tough thing here is let let's say tomorrow. You know, let's say this thing opens up um right right there. And you buy it. Or maybe you're already in it. I don't know. What I would do is it has to it has to do it um it has to make good on what I want it to do. Now, this is under the current market condition, which I'm not exactly real, real uh, loving on the market right now. Uh, a little bit to the short side, short term short, okay? Short term short. So, so this stock here, if it does not do what I want it to do tomorrow, I doubt I would be in it. In fact, today I closed out several that just were not doing what I wanted them to do because I didn't want to get caught holding a bad trade if this market was to go south. So what would I want this to do tomorrow? If it does not close over this level there, I would not want it. And I'm just looking at this candle right here. It must close over that right there. Otherwise, wait. Be patient. You don't have to be in it. Now, again, I don't know whether you're in this or not. Uh, personally, my choice under the current market condition would be something like this. And I do like the chart. I think, I think the chart overall is pretty good. Thank you, Charles. But what I would wait for, honestly, is that in the current market condition. 
I would wait for whoops I would wait for that candle with follow through you can argue with that's what I would do so <clears throat> in other words this candle here this would have been a great day to buy on that doji or this candle except I think under the current market condition we need to obey <clears throat> one second please excuse me I think we need to obey something they call the three-day rule three-bar rule three-bar rule one two three I think we need to respect it one two three under the current market condition current market condition very very important so you see a chart you buy the chart you see it here you buy it you make your money you move on I mean let's face it we're moving right up to the 200 here you make your money you move on wait till this candle puts in a bullish candle and then you can play the three bar rule one out one two three move on from there under the current market condition thanks again for that Lulu whoops CLF CLF uh, C CLF uh, right now CLF would have to get at least at least forget it the two the 20 at least above the 20 so uh, you know part of me wants to take it all the way up here but I'd be happy with the 20 so I see this over the 20 I can see being long in CLF otherwise wait be patient on it um, where are we Lulu short mm, Lulu oh look at that that's short city nice Olivia thank you holy moly that's a 10 percent move just to the 100 SMA yes I'm writing that one down <laughs> thank you so we have a 10 percent move here just to the 100 and another 10 percent move down to the 50 day simple moving average which ha down to the 200 day simple moving average which happens to be right smack on support and right split in the middle of a gap hmm I think we ought to take a look at that chart that could be a good what was that a 30 percenter 20 percenter 20 percenter right there very nice chart chart will be on the watch list tomorrow for short um, here we have that topping and we have something else let's look at that spiked candle there well not exactly where I thought it would have been but okay huh uh, on, on the gap down is what it was so on the gap there's your signal we rally up we fail that whole 200 and you can see now we have a bearish engulf up here right at the 200 day simple a 50 day simple moving average I would look for trading this to the downside uh, and three attempts let's see what three attempts at the 50 yep uh, let's see one two three yep uh, we'd, we'd call that one call that two call that three yep I agree that will be on the list tomorrow for short right now that will be my number one short for tomorrow right there thank you you thanks Don holy moly yeah I see that I've got the ES let's see is this right uh, 2040 2040 75 70 25 250 it's bouncing 0 0.25 0 0.50 right in there yeah man yeah good day to go short CELG um, unfortunately if I make money in this one I might be trading it for this one I, I may have a problem on my hands but maybe I'll be able to swap the two and I won't make any money but I won't lose any money who knows okay 
Uh, let's see, Alfred, J M, J M E I. And then um, let's see, we're going to call it a night here after Livia's uh, You're Welcome there. So let's see here. Uh, what candle or other chart signal would indicate a buy point? Um, if if I was if I had this thanks Jim if I had this chart on my watch list which I do and if if I was looking to get long which I'm not sure I'm gonna be doing that tomorrow um, what I would do because of yesterday's wick and today's small bodied candle little doji Hiromi maybe I would probably and also it's at the 100 simple right there I would probably put yeah right about there use that high come right across I would put that right in there now there's two ways to look at this there's one you could have bought it today knowing you had a very short stop in there maybe that's let's just split the difference um, you're looking at what a two and a half percent stop I think that's affordable I think that's doable so I could make the argument this might have been a buy at least a small position today on the other hand it might be best especially since we know what tomorrow might look like it might it might be best to let that third candle to get in there it's always better to have that third candle but we have a a a low a low what is that third candle going to do let's see what that candle does that might give us a little more insight especially if if I had this on a watch list and and this is where this is where the scanner comes in I, I'm sorry I you know people ask me questions sometimes and I I I have to I I try not to talk about the scanner because I don't want anyone to think I'm pushing it or anything like that but the fact of it is I use it a lot in my trades and you know I see a chart like this you know what I'm gonna move here this one over Th this actually makes more sense and this is NES that's what we're gonna be looking at NES so because this chart is similar when when I have it on a watch list and say today it does this and then tomorrow when I start seeing something like this right here when I start seeing that and if I see enough what we call VN normalized volume um, in V I guess it should be called when I see that which point two is not enough to get me excited uh, point eight is however so when I start seeing that I'm gonna buy it if I see this green and I know I've been watching it and I know I want it many times I'll buy it before I even look at it on TC2000 because it's doing everything I want it to do the only way it can be green if it's making a two-day high so when I see NES green or JE JMEI turn green then I know it's making a two-day high so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna move a line up right there so one train of thought like I said would be buy some today maybe which is too late but maybe tomorrow on a candle if it was in this area right here but I would add to it or the second train of thought would be buy on a breakout over that purple line and that's where that's how I would know it would happen and let's go look at what that NES see how NES see I knew I was looking at NES today I knew just like that JM JMEI it's the same type of chart here we are up we're back okay what are we going to do let's move this out of the way we have a low a low and a low all at the same place exactly at the same place three candles I say exactly I realize these lows aren't to the penny here's a case where two plus two does not equal four don't worry about the right to the pennies the idea is there the idea we're we're not penny trading we're swing trading we're not penny trading we're swing I'm gonna keep that I like that 
So I want to be a buyer in this area. And if I don't catch it here, this would be a great place to catch it. There's that breakout point right there, just like on JMEI, right there. So I hope that answered your question there, uh, Alfred. That's exactly what I would look at. Two ways to trade it, uh, two different buy areas, depending on your style. Either way, well, and you know what? Let's add something else. And you can do this with both of those ways to buy it. One, your stop. I would put my stop right there. I don't care about that low. What I care about is that candle right there. It starts breaking down there. I can tell you where it's going to go. It's going to right there. So if you want to put your stop down here and just give away more money, okay. But either way, if it fails here, you're going to right here. No questions in my mind. Now, here's the other thing. Is if you if you buy the breakout, you can still put your stop right there. Or in the current market condition, make a rule. The rule would be this must close over the T-line. If not, I'm out. Because what you're wanting it to do is, and that's if you buy it on this on this breakout here, okay? Because it started over the T-line. If it does not, if it turns around and closes below the T-line, don't hang on for old glory. Because there is no way there's a bull that's in charge there if it turns around and closes back below the T-line. There's just no bullishness to that chart at the moment for the current market conditions. If the market was more bullish, I would I would say, yeah, I'd hold that as long as it stayed above my stop. But under the current market condition, I think we need to really be a little bit careful and be a little more um, nitpicky about how we buy a trade and what it has to do uh, at the end of the day. There, I hope that was helpful. Good, good questioner. Thank you. Uh, I've been burnt uh, by that darn three bar rule. Yeah, don't. Hey, John, it's a good rule. It really is a good rule. Yeah, don't. And 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 here's here's another thing. And let, let's look at that three bar rule. Okay. Uh, you know what? Let's just stay right here. Heck, you know we don't even have to pick any charts out. Uh, one, two, three. And you know what happens is, and, and I know we have a doji and it just went up for another three bars. And now look where it is. But here's what happens is we're we're all good right here. We lose it on candles like this. We just lose it. And then we really lose it when it opens lower like this. So what happens is is you close it out, giving it all up, and then the thing moves up and it starts messing with your psyche. The the the, the there's Trading is like sections, um, and I'm, I'm going to draw the sections right here, and then we're going to call it a night. Section one, there you go. Section two, there you go, right there. But what happens is we have a tough time making that transition from section one to section two because this always happens you're always going to get profit taking and the profit taking always messes us up because we start second second guessing our trade our original trade what we don't what we fail to understand right away is this is the normal movement of a chart up back up you've got to have a pullback before you have a continued move up. Now, be careful here. What? Be careful and listen to what I did not say. I did not say after three bars you have to have a pullback. I did not say that. What I said is you have a rally, you have to have a pullback before it goes up higher. Nothing to do with the amount of bars. 
Now that right there is the $64,000 question I wish I could answer for each and every chart. And in no matter what kind of trending chart you look at, you will see pullbacks like this. Let's go back to the SPY. No one can argue that the SPY since 2012 hasn't been a dynamo. Absolutely a monster. But that monster has had its share of pullbacks. It has to pull back to go higher. Just like right now, it has to pull back to go higher. It just has to. And that's just what it's doing. Right now, I do not think of anything bearish until we get below the 50. So this pullback to me right now, at this moment, is just setting up to move higher. That's all. Until that changes, then, then we'll change, change attitudes there. Whew, okay. I want to thank everybody for being here. I appreciate it. Please do remember tonight will be a password changing night for the trading room. I will be closing the room down uh, later this evening, and I will bring it right back up. It takes me about two minutes after I close it down, and then uh, we'll be back up and running again tomorrow morning. Thank you again for being here. Thanks again for your questions and those that put your questions out there and allowed me just to just to kind of ramble. I appreciate it very much. We'll see everybody everybody tomorrow. Take care.